And uh, that's the Shinola on that one. All right. Now, I would like to address this arts funding issue. Now, this all reminds me of a humorous story of the traveling salesman. <clears throat> Let's say that the taxpayer is a farmer and the government is a salesman. Well, the farmer says, you can spend the night in my barn, but do me a favor, don't stick your willy into any of the three holes in the wall. <laughs> well, in, in this case, the salesman's willy represents the taxpayer's money, you understand. Well, the government, like the salesman, can't help himself. Sticks his willy in the first hole, it feels good. <laughs> Sticks his willy in the second hole, it feels even better. Sticks his willy in the third hole, and it hurts like hell, and it won't let go. Well, in the morning, the farmer comes out, and he explains. Behind the first hole was my wife. Behind the second hole was my daughter. And behind the third hole was a milking machine that don't let go till it gets 50 gallons. <laughs> Gentlemen, I propose that this arts funding is like a milking machine, and unless we shut it down, it's going to rip our dicks right off. Tonight's show is brought to you by the new U.S. government, improving the arts by severely limiting them. Bob Odenkirk, welcome to Mr. Show. My co-host, David Cross, is uh, over there off stage. Hey. Okay, now, uh, David refuses to do the show, so... Bob, what? tell him. Tell him why I can't do it. Okay, as part of a new government program, certain artists have been assigned senators to monitor them. They made me wear this tracking collar. <laughs> if David steps on a stage, it produces a low-level electrical shock. It's not low-level. It really hurts. Well, you know, look, obviously the show isn't that important to you. So instead, I will be doing my a cappella version of the rock opera Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, look at me, Tommy, over all right, here. All right, all right, I'll do it. Thing, I'll do you? it, Bob. Oh, all right. he's going to do it. Come on, come on. You can do it, David. Come on, it doesn't hurt that much. Don't you want it? You gotta want it. All right. Okay, let's start with the baseball sketch. All right. There you go. Okay, well, it's a beautiful day here at the old ballpark. Uh, here comes a vendor. <laughs> Pete has a cracker jack. Jesus, Bob, it hurts. Uh, let's see, I'll have some. Uh... Uh, David! David, it's me, Senator Tankerville! Senator, please, the collar, please, please. Oh, oh, hold it, let me get that for you. Uh, there, that should take care of it. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Now, you know, uh, you're supposed to tell me before you get on stage. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. I thought you were out of town. I, I thought you were going to well, be... Well, I am. I'm very busy. I'm with all you artists. I'm busier than a high-priced whore at an electronics convention. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm in Valdosta, Georgia, for the annual folk festival in Jelly Off. I'm supposed to be judging <laughs> art, etc. Uh, who are you? What do you want about? Come on. Well, I'm old Swerdlow. And this is the Ozark Mountain tradition, the song story. I I'll decide what it's called, fool. Just make with the art. Well, all righty. <laughs> Let's get Limberlegs on up there. Oh, Limberlegs went walking down to old Miller's Creek. And when he saw that big old cow, he jumped back in the sink. Oh, Limberlegs, where you going? Oh, all right, now stop that, old stop. I'm very sorry you had to see this, folks. Now, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Limberlegs ain't wearing no clothes. I find myself to be aroused and titillated by all this. Well, Senator, this is a tradition as old as a Georgia sunset. Shut up. Shut up, oh. David, you see what I have to contend with? I got a naked puppet doing a lewd, lascivious fandango on the lap of a full-grown man. I, I got women over here uh, dipping candles. Fella over there. 
He's got a butter churn. It's like a pioneer porn shop in here. Close it down, boys. Close them down. Senator, you're getting a little right. No, well, that's yeah. my limit lake. What? David, uh, tell me about your show. Uh, well, sir, it's called uh, Hooray yeah. for America. It's a comedy show. <laughs> it's a oh, a comedy. It's jokes, huh? Yep, just jokes. Talk about, uh, you know, America and its greatness. And, you know, I wish you could see it. <laughs> I wish you could. Oh, I wish I could see it, too, David. Yeah. I yeah. wish I could be everywhere that people are doing art. So that I could see it before the public sees it, and I could uh, keep them from being titillated or aroused or in any way confused by the counterculture. I wish, <laughs> but I'm just one senator. I wish. I wish. I, I wish, wish. I wish. I could. I wish. I wish. And the senator wished so hard that he grew magical wings. I think he's asleep. <laughs> Look at him. Precious old man. You know, these books for seniors really do the trick. <laughs> Colorful drawings, big printing, and all their favorite characters. Senator Tankerbell, the magical right-wing senator. Zim and Zam, the pro golfers in outer space. Lively, <laughs> the little Bible and his undersea adventure. They're all here in this wonderful series of books. <laughs> Order now. Now available in easy-to-swallow caplets. You're watching the What to Think Network. Well, thank you for joining us today, Penny, and I'll see you at the Dallas Joyathon. And thank you for tuning in to Good News today. You know, if you watch us tomorrow, we'll be visiting with Burton Quim, the leader of Overcome, an organization that helps men and women renounce the sin of homosexuality. If you remember, Burton was first with us in 1982 as a college student when he founded Overcome. Part of the gay conspiracy is recruitment, active recruitment on campus. They tell people it's all right to be a homosexual. And I stupidly got caught up in their propaganda. And now I know that I was just a confused heterosexual and I'm really who God wants me to be. We'll hear about Burton's slip into temptation as he was misled by the unrelenting homosexual cabal. <laughs> Troy, put that goddamn camera down and join us. It's about fun. Come on, get it, girl. You know what you love. <laughs> Stop moving it. about his glorious return to the fold at Overcome. I thought I was happy, but I was miserable. I, now I have a wife. And, oh, let's, let's see you look. Okay. And that's me, and that's her. <laughs> that is handsome. Mm -hmm. And we're working on a family now. Really are. Very hard. Working very hard on that. And this is the real me you're looking at. Oh. That's uh, good news. Now I just want to help others. Just, just want to help. Then he'll tell us about his second terrible lapse into homosexuality. I love all of you! <laughs> and about his triumphant re-return to the fold. It's an aberration. Believe me, it's not normal. You're making a choice. Tell them. Uh, tell them. You're, make, you're making a choice. A terrible, <laughs> terrible choice. We're here for you overcome. <laughs> Burton will tell us about his most recent lapse and the lapse he has planned for August, which should take him to Rio de Janeiro. It'll be a glorifying hour of witness. I hope you'll join us. I'm Dr. Rudy Moore. Now stay tuned for The Bible Machine. Bible Machine with your host, Dr. Don Olomite. Last year, a lost chapter of the Dead Sea Scrolls was unearthed. And perhaps the most exciting find was information on a 13th apostle. Now known as the overlooked apostle, his name was Marshall, and he was considered by many to be the premier hypnotist in Galilee. The book of Marshall, entitled Power, Prophet, and Passion, has shed new light on some of the best-loved Bible stories. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
Jesus. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus. What is it, Marshall? Jesus, what if I told you that the meek could inherit something a whole lot better than the earth? <laughs> what if I told you that by simply applying my theories of positivity and corrective thinking, that the meek could inherit the will to do whatever they wanted in their wildest dreams? This is good news, Brother Marshall. We shall discuss it later. Jesus, Let's... you pray a lot, right? Yes. How many times, when you're at home, alone, do you say to yourself, I wish I lived in a nice house. I wish I had nice things. I wish I could lose those last 20 pounds. <coughs> Marshall, I'm not interested in things material. Jesus, I, I used to be like you. Dirty, smelly, thinking I was the son of God. <laughs> Excuse us uh, one second. Marshall, I am the son of God. And I'm not smelly either. Well... Marshall was famous for his after-prayer seminars, which encouraged the other apostles to keep their feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Marshall, go amongst them and feed them from these five loaves and fishes. By a miracle of faith, they will all be fed. All ye humble of the earth, step up and claim your fish, only 12 drachmas apiece. No, Marshal, don't charge them anything. The fish are free, they are a gift from God. All right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. If you act now, okay, the fish and the loaf, six drachmas apiece. No, Marshal, just give them the fish. Okay, Jesus, you got my back up against the wall on this one, but here's the deal. If you act now, of the fish and a loaf, and I'll throw in this miraculous unleavened bread leavenator. <laughs> No, don't applaud for him. No, no, you're fools. Marshall was also present at the tomb of Lazarus. Arise. Jesus, Arise. let me try. Lazarus, what if I told you that only losers die? <laughs> and the only thing preventing your resurrection is you. That's it, Marshall. I'm letting you go. Uh, Jesus, you know, I'm not only a certified life changer, but I am also now... A memory expert, what am I thinking of Jesus? This is good news, Marshall. Please leave your sandals with Sheila on the way out. We can now read perhaps the most moving passage in Marshall's writings. The Long Night of Doubt. God, if you're there, show me a sign. Be active, not reactive. Marshall, listen carefully to my word. Leave everybody alone. <laughs> Ask yourself, are you happy settling for omnipotence? Power, profit, and passion. Offer limited to God and godlike deities. Get very excited and speak in tongues. Uh, Bob, actually, that's a stage direction. I think you're supposed to, you know, get all excited and blah, blah, blah speak in tongues oh. like that. <laughs> I'll just, uh, that'll okay. be fun. That's okay. all right. Take. <clears throat> take two. Offer limited to God and godlike deities. <laughs> Bingo, that was the one, Bobby. That was great. All right, now let's knock these other ones out, voiceover king, before we go to lunch, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. To win, you must be 18 and come in first place. Great, moving on. <laughs> Offer expires now. A zippity doo da next. Not to be confused with the disease, cancer. <laughs> zippity a moving on. Harvard's Memory Loss Clinic, established in 1952, 1967, and for the first time in 1981. That was a goodie, Bob. We're moving on. We're going to do that disclaimer about the uh, John Tesh album. You got that? Okay. Should sure. be on the page there, Bob. Sure. Okay. Not suitable for any living thing. <laughs> I they need it, here. too. That Red Rocks thing is awful. Moving on. Moving on. Mr. Pickles Funtime Abortion Clinics. We'll bring out the kid in ya. <laughs> I smell lunch. One more and we're out of here, baby doll. All right. Globocam, we own everything so you don't have to. Gentlemen, this isn't going to work anymore. Globocam owns 29% of the globe. And your company distributes 1,945 different products. Globocam produces 83 new products per minute. But there's a problem. People don't like Globocam and its 2,023 different products. The perception is, is that this company is a monster. A beast. A cold, heartless, smelly behemoth. Run by a greedy, fat, fat-headed, fatty pants. A fat soul. Who do you think you are? This company cares. 
We were in the people business when you were in short pants. My great, great, great grandfather started this company with one single rickety, leaky, handcrafted slave ship <laughs> and a simple motto people selling people to people. <laughs> so don't tell me that I'm fat. Did, did we offend you? Good. Now we have your attention and we have to win you over. Just like you have to win consumers. Continue. Cute, friendly, lovable. Three things you are not, but you know who is? Pit Pat, Global Chem's new mascot. Pit Pat, a magical, pansexual, non-threatening spokes thing. Ladies and gentlemen, we present new ad campaigns for three of your 3,974 different products. Watch. Bags, bags, bags. It always seems like you've got too many bags. Help me. You can't just throw them away. Now there's new Bag Hutch. Bag Hutch is specially made for bags and holds up to 12 bags. Honey, where are all the bags? In the Bag Hutch. Oh, shit. Bag Hutch by Flitz, a division of Globocam. Take it from me. I love you. <laughs> Did you see him? It's Pit Bag. Oh, goodness. Isn't he great? Here, watch another one. We went to a real Ding Dong Burger to ask real Ding Dong Burger eaters what they think of the new Ding Dong King Kong Sing Song Burger. It's great. It's so big, it's fucking great. <laughs> How about you folks? Yeah. I can feed the whole family for under $20. And with the price of beef going through the fucking roof, that's a deal. Fellas, this sucker dragged me down here, I don't know. <laughs> Just eat the fucking thing. Fuck you, asshole. Wow. This little motherfucker's tasty. Told you, fucking ass. Ding Dong Burgers, a Globochem company. Take it from me. I love you. <laughs> Say he loves you. What about the swearing? Oh, well, here. There's one more. God damn it. <laughs> Shit. Fuck. Ass. Shit. Mother. Cock. Fuck. Fuck fuck fuck. Tech Corp Systems, another helpful Globocam company. Take it from me. I love you. Fit Fit Hello! Oh. Okay, we have plans for an animated children's program, a breakfast cereal, a line of clothing, a video game. Excuse me. Excuse me. You still haven't answered the question. The swearing. What about the swearing? Please, let's stick to one subject here. Okay, Pit Pat is a magical pixie who can fly around. Wait, you and... can't have all that swearing. It's offensive. <sighs> Look, lady, I don't come down to where you work and slap the dick out of your mouth. That's it. You're right, that's it. That's the new slogan for Grandma Betsy's biscuit powder. The world of the future is much cruder than the world of today. In 1994, you couldn't say the word bitch or asshole on TV. Now it's okay. Where do you think we'll be in the year 2000? Are you interested in staying on the cutting edge? Yeah, but what happened to Grandma Betsy? She looks like a man. She is a man. <laughs> the fastest growing segment of our population are transsexuals. They buy and spend for two. Look, the world is changing. It's becoming increasingly difficult to insult people and thereby get their attention. Knock, knock. Who's there? Change. Oh, come on in. Oh, I see you brought Globochem with you. Really? I thought that company was run by a greedy, fat, fat-headed, fatty fan. A fat fuck. Is it? Is it? <laughs> He's dead. Good. That's what you wanted, right? Yeah. yeah. Farino, good okay, job, guys. Great. Well, all right. <laughs> we do. Did I kill you? Good. I got your attention. Hello. I'm David Cross from television's Mr. Show. <laughs> you know, there are advertising agencies like these all over America whose job it is to lie to you. Don't buy into it. In fact, don't buy anything ever. You don't need to. You can make whatever you want at home out of hemp. Hemp is an all-purpose... See, the government doesn't want you to know this, but you can make rope and mayonnaise and... Pretty David, what the hell am I watching? Senator Tankerbell, is oh. that you? 
Up here, David, I've been magically transformed into a twinkling light. Oh, boy. Oh, boy is right. This show is over. No, Senator, please. No, on. shut your pie hole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> David, why can't you do a show with merit? Something with family values. Oh, I would if I could, but... Oh, darn this counterculture. It's got me all bugaboo. <laughs> That's what they do, confuse the youth. It reminds me of a humorous story. See, the counterculture is like a traveling salesman, and the youth is like a farmer. Well, hey, the hey, farmer hey, says you... Wait a second, Senator. Hold on, you just gave me an idea. Uh, what? I'm going to work with you, not against you. Uh, <laughs> I got an idea for a show that's going to knock your socks on your ass. All right. Come on, gang! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Home Box Office, in conjunction with the U.S. Senate, presents a House of Representatives production. Live from the Globocam Center for the Performing Arts, The Joke, The Musical. Oh, hello. <laughs> My, it's been a hot summer here in Gallagher's Corners. Good of you to all come down. Well, let's see. It happened exactly one year ago today. Seems a salesman's car had broken down over by Gallagher's Creek, and he was looking for a place to spend the night. Where do I go now? My car has broken down. I'm selling leather pants in the Ozarks. Where do I go now? A farmhouse. This is the knocking song. I'm knocking on a door. Knock, 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 not forevermore. Knockity, knock, knock, knock. Stop that infernal knocking song! Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. My car broke down. Might I spend the night? Yes, you can. Step this way, right this way, see my house. That's my house, but you shall not stay in my house. You shall stay in the barn, the, the barn. barn. But adhere to this simple rule. Hey! Don't stick your dick in these holes. Don't stick your dick in these holes. These holes three are not for thee. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. That won't be a problem. I I'm afraid all I can offer in payment are these leather pants. Leather pants? Well, I suppose I could give them to my gay son. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Good night to you and yours. Well, that worked out quite nicely. What a kindly old farmer. <laughs> good night, moo cow. <laughs> good night, hay. Good night, holes. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. You know you want to do it. Come on, Mr. Salesman, what do you say? No way! He told me that I could not. He told me that I should not. What would the farmer say? And what about the moo cow? And what about the hay? <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> Good God, man, you're weak. You're a worm with no will. Be bold, son, no one's watching. Show some spine, have your feel. What magic lies in wait for you? What miracles in store? Could heaven be on the other side? Come open the door. Do it, do it, do it. You know you want to do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. No! I am just a simple man. I sell leather pants. But now I'm torn by my conscience. I sell leather pants. The kindly farmer said no. But I want to do it so. 
Should I stick my dick in these holes? I think I'll stick my dick in these holes. Yeah! <laughs> number one feels good. Oh, yeah! I can feel alive. Good, now try number two. That one makes you cry. And now it's time for number three. The best of the life. With number three, you'll make history. Come on, give it all you got. Oh my God! Are you still alive? I told you not to! I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. The first two felt so good, each one better than before, but this third all is killing me! What's in these holes? What's in these holes? You don't deserve an answer, but I'll give one anyway. Behind the first hole was my wife. That is where she stays. The second was my daughter, young and supple like a fawn. The third hole was a milking machine that doesn't oh. quit no. till 50 gallons are withdrawn. Yeah! Oh. Withdrawn! No. Withdrawn! No! Oh, God, I'm tired. Treat yourself. <laughs> 